Hello my dudes and welcome back to Enchant the World. This episode we are still going to be doing evil magic mods, but we're taking a break from occultism to dip into some evil blood magic. Now it's not the mod blood magic, it's going to be evil craft. Through evil craft we can earn a mastery of the skies via magic brooms. These are amazing devices that are going to let us fly through the world much easier than Mage Leap and potentially much quicker. Well, no, maybe not much quicker because oh my god, Mage Leap is insane. Whereas Mage Leap is like, a, I don't know, like a speed bike, like a Kawasaki something, a magical broom is more like the Rolls Royce of flying vehicles, although you do kind of sit on it like a motorcycle. Um, either way, for us, it's way more comfortable, way more convenient. It's a much more chill time. So let's jump in. Okay, so getting started with Evil Craft. We're gonna need to gather up all the things we have in our computer to do with Evil Craft. So I'll just dump some stuff into my backpack and get going. So evil craft, where does it begin? Well, it all starts with blood. We've got loads of condensed blood, which is gonna come in handy. We can use this instead of the blood we've gathered via the blood extractors. So a couple of stacks of this, loads of dark gems. These are essential for the mod. They're basically the diamonds of evil craft. And we'll use this dark ore to get even more gems. Evil craft does have its own quest tree, and that's gonna be really handy for us. It's a great place to get started and to move on from, but where is the start? of this entire chain. Well, I guess it starts up here with being thunderstruck, let it rain, dark temples, and of course, the dark gems. These are found all over underground, and by now you've no doubt found a load of these. And then of course, there's collecting blood using these blood extractors. Basically, you craft these, you put them in your hotbar down the bottom, and then while they're there, anytime you kill a monster, the blood from that monster will go into your hotbar. Pretty cool. All right, so we're gonna turn some of these dark gems into bloody dark gems. Yeah, here we go. In a blood infuser, we infuse a dark gem with blood and it becomes a dark power gem. These are essential for the mod. They're also actually required to make the blood infuser. You need a blood infusion core, which is a dark power gem surrounded by hardened blood shards before you even get going. And we'll use this bit in the graveyard here just to kind of put down this blood. So basically what you do is to get hardened blood, I believe unless they changed it, you literally just put blood in a hole and it becomes hardened blood. Like this, here we go. Now it takes some time for this to kind of congeal and turn into hardened blood. So you might be looking at it kind of flow like water for a little bit. There's nothing we can do with the condensed blood though, it doesn't craft into anything. Basically you just use this on a tank or a blood infuser and it goes in as like stored blood. So this will harden the blood and when we dig this up it should get us some blood shards if I remember correctly. We're also going to need to dig another hole over here. And we'll make this a bit more of a pool. And again it has to be five blocks, so yeah, that looks like five to me. Then we empty the blood into here, one, two, three, four, five, looks good. Toss a gem in here, and this will infuse the gem to become one of those dark power gems. Amazing. So here we go, we've got the hardened blood here. If we dig this up, we should get some shards. Let's see if we can use touch dig on this. Where'd it go? No, okay, so you can't use a spell to dig this up, good to know. But anyway, we got that infused gem and we've unlocked the next part of the quest. And it's good to do these because you might get lucky, you might get something like a blood tank. Oh my god, one condensed blood. That kind of sucks. But yeah, blood shards. If you leave a bucket of blood on the ground long enough, it will dry into hardened blood. Yeah, we know that. Right, okay, so you don't use a spell, you don't even use a pickaxe to break the blood. You've got to use a flint and steel. So we've got any more hardened blood? No, not yet. Now this better work, because we've used all of the blood we've collected in our blood extractor. It's a slow process gathering all this blood. I mean, we've got some guys around here. Maybe we could kill McGinger the Baron. Maybe she'd get us some blood. I don't think she'd be too happy with that, though. Man, do you know what? This takes forever. I think maybe it might go quicker if we get up all this blood that we've got down here. There we go. And if we put it into separate individual holes, that might work better. So let's try this. Boom, 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 and boom. And this makes sense, right? A large glass of water takes much longer to turn into ice than small ice cubes. That's why we have ice cube trays. Right? Yeah, sure. I can see McGinger over there just kind of like side-eyeing me, <laughs> just pouring blood 
into the ground. <laughs> Don't worry, McGinger, we're not doing anything evil here, I promise. Uh, no, actually, it is <laughs> evil craft, so yeah, that's pretty much what we're doing. Oh, there we go, right, so, flint and steel on this, and we should get some blood shards. Yeah, there we go. Now, you don't get a huge amount. Well, no, you do, actually. You get nine. That's changed. And that's more than what we need to get started. So, we've got the dried blood now, and what are we going to get for this? Oh, a dark gem. Okay, it's not too bad. Next up, of course, is the infusion core. You get this by mixing a dark power gem that we've got mixed with the blood shard. Open up my crafting table on a stick. Surround a power gem with shards, and we've got the core. And, of course, this is used to make... The Blood Infusion uh, McJiggy Jog. There we go, the infuser. Any old rock around a core. Boom. And where are we going to do all of our blood magic? Well, I reckon, yeah, we're going to pick one of these small little holes. Because these are actually pretty easy. Because there's not a huge amount of machinery required for evil craft. If you want to set up a mob farm, you might need some room for that. But otherwise, this small room here is going to fit our needs pretty well. And you can put the blood here, and it will go into the tank. Oh, nice. This only has the capacity for 10,000 blood, but you can improve that later on. In fact, you kind of have to. But now we have the infuser, you can skip all that nonsense and put dark gems directly in here, and they will slowly become dark power gems. Amazing. We might need a few of these, so uh, we'll only make 10 for now. But boom, there we go. And a uh, crushed dark gem, that, that'll come in handy. And this is one of the very useful things you can get with Evil Craft. So if you don't want to have to spend valuable materials to repair your gear, you can use instead blood. Making a blood repair chest is pretty high up on that list. Here it is, the blood chest. So another blood infusion core, which again, we're going to need these hardened blood shards. So is there a way to get hardened blood shards without actually digging them up off the ground? I don't actually think there is. I thought there was. There should be. We can smelt hardened blood, and we can get hardened blood, aha, in a drying basin. And again, this is a pretty essential craft for this mod. Just some logs, some black dye, and some iron ingots. Man, it's a good thing I got that squid farm up and running. Here we go, the drying basin. There's a mechanical drying basin as well. Okay, but we just want the regular one. Oh, yeah, there we go, a drying basin. So if you put this down next to... Oh, quickly, let's grab up that blood on the ground before it hardens. Goink. We'll dig up these with some flint and steel, because, hey, it's the same amount of shards. It's just the drying basin is a bit more of a neater way to do it. Also, if you want to automate, it's the only way to do it. Well, no, I mean, you could automate with, like, some, some placers and some droppers. It all sounds very convoluted, though. So we'll chuck some blood into the drying basin, and this should be much quicker because I guess this basin is kind of designed to dry stuff. So if it's not quicker, then that kind of sucks. It's not, not the quickest, though, is it? Hmm. Oh, no, there we go. Right, and this gives you actually a block of hardened blood. We could have got that by, I think, silk touching the blood over there. But you know what? Whatever. And yeah, this is used in a smelter to get hardened blood shards. So actually, I mean, we could just put this down and then use the flint and steel to dig it up and get the same amount of shards. So maybe using a smelter isn't really required, but if you want to be neat and tidy, you can put a smelter down here and do that. It's just smelting takes fuel and time, and we have none of that, guys. We have none of that. We're on a mission to get a broom. So we have the blood infuser now. We're going to get... Ooh, oh, my God, a blood extractor. That looks like a big one as well. Is it a big one? Let's find out. Oh, yeah, this one's got... No, wait, it's just got 5,000. But again, every blood extractor that you get as a reward, you can combine into your big boy and add another 5,000 capacity to it. That's pretty cool. So what are the next steps? We've got ourselves a blood infuser. We've got ourselves a drying basin. We're well on the way. We've got some dark gems, some dark power gems, hardened blood shards. Well, we want that blood chest for one. There we go, the blood chest. Now we're going to put this down, I reckon, well, next to the infuser. Why not? And again, you put blood in here. We'll put some of this condensed blood on the left. And this really goes very far. Each one of these translates to half a bucket. So if you're going to go into Evil Craft at any point and you see condensed blood in a loot chest, grab it up. This stuff is gold dust. 
So yeah, we can repair our gear in here. It's not really a massive problem for us because all of our gear is auto repairing. But if we go into our backpack, maybe there's like a tool that we want to repair. Yeah, here we go, an unbreaking iron sword. Let's plonk that in here and see what that does. Oh yeah, look at that, look at the speed as well. This repairs stuff really impressively quickly. It costs blood, but again, condensed blood goes really far. That's amazing. So yeah, the blood chest, a great place for repairing gear. All right, so what's this at the end of the chain? Colossal repairs, a papa blood chest. Oh my God, whoa, look at this bad boy. A big, big, big blood chest. Is the blood chest not working fast enough? Do you have too many items that need to be repaired? Make a colossal blood chest. I kind of want to do that. This thing looks amazing. Oh my God, no, wait, hang on a sec. 25 reinforced undead planks. What's an undead plank? So we need the reinforced undead plank, which means we need undead planks and promises of tenacity. Okay, so that's getting a bit late game, evil craft. We can come back to that and make ourselves a massive blood chest at some point, but that's pretty cool. Nice bit of hardened blood there, thank you very much. But we are gonna need some undead trees. So to get an undead tree, this is where things get a little bit tricky and this is where your world gen is super important. So in the blood infuser, you're gonna need a dead bush. You can also grow these in a Batania hopper pot, which is useful. With a market, you can trade an emerald for them. So you don't have to be nearby to a desert biome. So what the what the dickens? We're gonna need to go and find an undead bush or rather like a, like a dry bush. Have I got any in my computer? We're looking for a dead bush. Oh my God, yeah, look at this. No, that's a dead sapling, not the same. Hmm, so we could plonk down a market, but you know what? We've got loads of desert around. I'm sure if we go to one of these sandy biomes, we can find ourselves, or if I can find a sandy biome, we can find ourselves a dead tree. Now they won't spawn on beaches because that's not really desert. Where do we reckon it's gonna have some dead bush? I feel pretty confident about a tundra having dead bush. So let's head on over there. Here we go, right. So it looks like it should have dead bush because yeah, look at all these brown shrubberies, but these are tundra shrubs. These aren't dead bushes, and I don't think I see any dead bushes lying around. Oh man, what a pain. Here we go, look at this, an old growth dead forest. A dead forest? That's gotta have some dead bushes. Let's go and check it out. So we are here in the dead forest, and it turns out, actually, this forest isn't as dead as was advertised. Let's go over here and see if we can find some dead bushes. But yeah, no, it's, it's pretty tricky to find this stuff. It looks like maybe a market is honestly the best way. It's a much quicker way, that's for sure. Yeah, you know what? No dead bushes over here either. So I'm gonna hoik up the warp scroll that I have. Yeah, here we go, my trusty warp scroll. I'm gonna have to make some more of these because getting home with these, very handy. Also though, we do have to start thinking about getting around the base. I've never really considered this because I can move very quickly. Oh my God, didn't get flight that time. Got it now, but ugh. Yeah, because I can fly around, I never really considered it, but having some platforms that go specifically from areas I need to get to and zip around would be really helpful, like a portal room. Now think about that down the line. So we want to build a market, not a very tricky craft. I've got all the stuff I need already, and we're going to need something to trade with. So we're going to get some emeralds as well. Got a few of these too. Honestly, markets are so helpful in the early game to get the crops you need we am I going to plonk it by the, um, ooh, here she comes. <laughs> hey, how's it going, Emma? Good to see you again. Markets are just so useful for getting the crops you need early on. It's really nothing you should ever sleep on. So, a dead, oh, we can get an undead sapling directly. Boom. We get a few of these, because I might need a few of them. Thank you very much, Emma, for saving the day. So these undead trees will grow like normal trees and they will drop undead planks. So until we get a graveyard, this area out front looks actually like a really good place to grow some undead trees, right in the garden of the crypt. It's like a crypty garden, that makes sense, yeah. Then we'll plonk just a few of these down. Can we bone mill them? That's a big question. Here we go, give it a go. Yeah, we can, we can bone mill them, great news. Ow, oh no, oh no. There we go, good stuff. And of course, we're just gonna ulti mine this away. Get those evil undead logs. Oh, 
Oh, now what's very cool is these undead trees drop blood splats. This could actually be a way of farming blood. And it would also be like a no-kill vegan way of doing it as well. With no Well, I don't know. I think like killing monsters isn't really, you know, like anti-vegan because they're pretty evil, you know? But there we go, and we'll put down a few more undead saplings. Now, it looks like these trees don't drop undead saplings. They drop dead bushes, which, luckily, we can use in the blood infuser to turn into undead saplings. So there you go, this is how it works. You can find these dead bushes in deserts, or you can get them to drop from undead saplings that you get from the market. Very cool. Thank you very much. So we've got the undead wood, we'll turn it into planks. Just a couple, because we only need those for the quest. Which we'll now complete. There we go. Oh, and another blood extractor. We're going to get a really huge blood extractor going here. So we've got like 35,000 now, up to 40,000. Very cool. So now we're some ways down the quest chain. Let's take a quick look, a bit of an overview of what Evil Craft has to offer. So one of the big things that people go into Evil Craft for is very early on, I mean, we've, we're already there, you can make a Vengeance Pickaxe, and this is a pickaxe that has Fortune 5 on it. What you can also do is use other mods, other techniques, to extract Fortune 5 from this pickaxe. It has Curse of Vengeance 3, but the mod also gives you a way, removing enchantments and curses, to remove this curse and actually the Fortune 5 enchant from the pickaxe. But it gives you Fortune 5 very early on, which is really powerful. It has a durability of 154. So it's not really that good. But the Fortune 5, well, that definitely is. And certainly when you're getting some of the rarer materials that you want a Fortune drop, like I'm not sure if Fortune works on all the modium. But if it does, Fortune 5 is gonna, well, it's gonna improve your fortunes, my friend. There's a Vein Sword, and this is the better way of getting blood from the stuff you kill. It's not got great attack damage, but it also has looting, which again is something you can extract and of course, the big one, what we're going for this episode, the blood brooms. And these are crazy. You need a tip, a bottom bit, the brush, and of course the shaft to make a broom. And brooms store blood and use blood as kind of like petrol, as gas, as you Americans might say. Oh my God, I gotta fill my broom up with gas. Uh, that's my best American impression. There we go. Brooms can be made using uh, broom parts. Yeah, it's pretty simple and we will get there. But first up, let's try and make this Vengeance Pickaxe. Now it's not cheap, it does cost diamonds. It also digs at a diamond level. We've got the Blood Shards as well. What we're missing though is Dark Sticks, but again, no. Now that we've got the Undead Planks and those Dark Gems, this is something we can do too. So the Dark Gem goes at the top, Undead Planks go underneath. We'll need a few of these sticks because they're pretty important for brooms as well. 16 should be fine for now. So there we go, the three diamonds, the dark sticks, and the hardened blood shards make us the vengeance pickaxe. Whoo! Fortune 5 at our fingertips, this is a monumental moment. Honestly, this is something you should do really early on. We sidestepped a lot because we powered down mystical agriculture. But it's good to cover these things because if this was early game, Fortune 5 on a diamond pickaxe would be crazy. Now, while we haven't removed the curse, curse of vengeance, that does mean that we might have to summon vengeance spirits and defend ourselves against those when we're out mining. So it's like, you know, I think that's still worth it though, because Vengeance Spirits aren't crazy. Got a Hardened Blood Shard, very nice, and some XP. Don't mind if I do. So that's all well and good, but what about removing enchants? Let's see if we can get to the point in Evilcraft where we can remove these enchantments and curses from this amazing pickaxe. And this is where things get a little bit illogical, a little bit kind of like mystical and weird, basically. We got it, craft promises. Now, I, I, what? You can't craft a promise, you just say it, right? But you use these promises to upgrade the machine. So this is how you upgrade the blood infuser into something much better. So to make a promise, we're gonna need an iron promise acceptor, which is a block of iron inside the blood infuser. Okay, we can do that. We'll do this step by step. There we go, that's gonna get covered in blood and turned into, well, whatever it gets turned into it. We are gonna need some more blood though. I think it needs like 10K blood. Wait, is that not working? The blood infuser, 10,000 blood. Yeah, this should work. Why are you not working, my friend? 
What's going on here? For some reason, the blood won't fill up. So we're trying to get this up. Oh, I see. Right, so the problem is, condensed blood only goes up by 500. It won't let me put another one in because it's not quite at 10k. You could run into this problem. It's a bit of a weird one. What if I try and suck all the blood out using this blood infu blood extractor? Yeah, now it's empty. Now condensed blood should get us all the way up to that 10k. Okay, that's worked. So word to the wise. Yeah, use the blood extractor to take all the blood out, then use condensed blood to get up to that 10k. There we go, we've got an iron promise acceptor. This is used with a few different things. Right, so this is like basically the core of how you make all of these promises. So we want promise of tenacity number one, which means we need a bowl of promises and a spider's eye. Fairly sure I'm gonna have the spider's eye. So now we need a bowl of promises tier zero. We get that by putting a dusted bowl of promises inside the blood infuser, which means we need crushed dark gems. Oh, hey, we're going back to a cult. Oh, it's, oh my God, one of these rude dudes. Get out of here. Fear of the storm, bit too much. Necrotic decay, there we go, rip. Yeah, Melados, that means we are gonna be using our genies to crush some dark gems. Finally a use for you boys, eh? Thought we'd forgotten about you, we have not. Wait, can I just right click? Oh yeah, I can just right click to give these guys their dark gems. Wait, he took them all. Give them back. Give some to Brett. There we go. Right, so here we go, the three dark power gems create an empty bowl of promises. Then two of these crushed dark gems create a dusted bowl of promises. Now we have to make the dusted bowl of promises into like an infused one. So some more blood in here, if you don't mind. There we go. Does this cost a whole 10K? That'd be crazy. There we go, there it is. Oh, it only just half, so 5,000 blood, but the bowl of promises. Now we can combine this with the Iron Promise Actuator, a spider's eye, we get the Promise of Tenacity. Now this upgrades a machine, so basically we put this over here on the left, and it's a machine upgrade, basically. Gives us more capacity, we can put loads of blood in here now, let's empty the entire stack. Oh yeah, we're gonna run out of blood though, pretty quick. But there we go, we've upgraded the machine, we've got a fruit salad, okay great. And now it's time to look into removing enchantments and curses, because this is pretty big. Getting the curse off of this pickaxe is going to be huge. So we need to make a purifier. We use a dark block, which is a lot of gems. Some other dark gems, a blood infusion core, and a hardened blood shard. So hardened blood shards around the dark power gem creates the blood infusion core. And is that everything we need for the purifier? Man, it sounds like a Marvel hero. The Purifier. Oh, uh, right, yeah, of course we need the Dark Gem block as well. Oh, we're out of Dark... No, we're not out of Dark Gems, are we? Well, we can use this Deep Slate Dark Ore and the Fortune Pickaxe to get loads more. Oh, uh, yeah, moment of truth. So let's see how much we get with the Vengeance Pickaxe. Very nice, yeah, quite a lot now. Five gems, pretty cool. Now we might summon the Vengeance Spirit. But, yeah, no, so far when we're, we're, we're doing okay. No debuffs. Yeah, pretty good. So one more Dark Gem. Put that in the computer as well. The Purifier should have everything we need now. And this can go, yeah, right, right over here on the edge. Look, this is a very discreet mod. Already we've only made four machines, and they fit inside this tiny cubicle. There's no big multi-block apart from the massive blood chest, but so far, so good. So the purifier, what do we do with this? So there's one more thing we're gonna need. You put blood inside the purifier, toss the item in, it'll remove the curse, and then put it into the book. And a book is kind of like a blood book, I suppose? Yeah, I mean, it's red, it's disgusting. Can absorb item enchants when placed in the purifier. Very cool. Right, and this is why we needed the promise of tenacity because it's a book combined with that and some blood, okay. And there we go, the bloke. So we're gonna suck out some of this blood, put three buckets worth in here. One, 
Oh no, it automatically puts in three. Very good. Put the blood back in there so we can keep making those blocks. Toss in the vengeance pickaxe. Did it go in? Do I have to right click with it? There we go. Oh yeah, look at this. And then we toss the block on top. Oh my god, there's some crazy stuff going on there. Oh. Right click with this. Yeah. One block, no blood. And now let's take the stuff out. So now we have a Vengeance Pickaxe with just Fortune 5 and a Bluck that's removed the curse. Doesn't store the curse, just straight up removes it. So I don't think we needed more than one Bluck. Let's uh, cancel that. Very cool, a Fortune 5 Pickaxe, super easy to make. You just need some blood from killing monsters and you can have a Fortune 5 Diamond Pickaxe at your disposal super early in the game. Well, okay, that's all well and good, but it's not a broom, is it? I can't ride this uh, Vengeance pickaxe. I wish I could. That'd be pretty cool. But now let's make ourselves a broom. We're on to broom crafting. So to get into broom crafting, we're going to see if we can find the Evil Craft book. I should have one. Origins of Darkness. Yeah, this is the one. Why do we need the Evil Craft book? Well, that's a good question. One I'm just about to answer. So the Origins of Darkness, the reason why this is pretty important for making a broom is it explains the properties different materials have when you make your broom out of them. You can make your like brush out of different things. You can use uh, string, wool maybe, or even like hay. And the different materials you use give, it, give your broom a different property. So sticks in the middle and uh, some dust either side, crushed dark gems to get the bare rod. Then we'll put a dark gem at the top and dust either side to get the cap. That's the cap, the shaft, and now, of course, the bottom of the broom. Yeah, there we go. Two dark sticks and three gems to make the bear brush. Now, to make these items like the bear brush, all you do is put it in here with two of the material that you want to turn this into. So you can get a wheat brush. This gives you a modifier of speed 100. Okay, cool. So now we're into modifiers and things that can change our broom. And again, it's back to the book. Because if you keep going through the pages, here we go. So you can have a maximum amount of modifiers on a broom. You can infuse it with all kinds of different stuff. But the core things it's going to need are speed, of course, the top speed. Acceleration, how quickly it gets up to top speed. Maneuverability, which is actually quite important. Brooms have like a really slow turn radius. So maneuverability is going to help you with that. Also, levitation. Levitation is actually quite big because without good levitation, it takes ages to go up. You can go forwards and backwards, left and right, super quick, but going up, that's a challenge. There's also loads of things you can add to this, like how much damage you inflict when you smash into a broom. Flame, any colliding entity, will be lit on fire. Kamikaze brooms. When colliding with an entity, the broom will explode. Very unlikely that a mounted player would survive something like this. Oh man, a kamikaze broom? I kind of want to make one. But yeah, here we go. It's not exactly very easy to read, but you can see all these different modifiers that you can add to a broom as well. So give it redstone, you'll get it extra speed. Give it coal, you give it acceleration. A nether star gets us another max modifier. But here we go, onto broom parts in the book, and this shows you exactly the materials and what they do. So a nether rack shaft will get you good speed. Whoa, good max modifiers. Good maneuverability and good acceleration. Looks like a netherrack shaft is a good one. Obsidian gets you sturdiness, but it's not exactly the quickest of brooms. Blaze rods, however, look at this. So this gets you loads of everything. Not great on max modifiers, but because blaze rods are quite hard to get, I think it's made them pretty good. Likewise, actually, purple rods look pretty good as well. Good modifiers, really good levitation. But anyway, that's Rods. You can look through these modifiers and stuff for days, find out what the best thing is that you're going to want to make it with. Likewise, you've got the same thing with the brush end of things. And now on to the caps. So, yes, the Creeper Cap gives you Kamikaze. We're going to have to try this. So, for the Bear Brush, we're going to be using Wool. Now, for the Bear Rod, we're going to see if we've got any of that sweet, sweet purple. I'm fairly sure. Yeah, look at this. Purple block. Either side gets us the purple rod. Delicious. And the cap, we're going to be using dark power gems because efficiency really is so good, especially if you want to go the distance on your broom. So with the broom components in place, put the cap, the rod, and the brush. 
in there and boom, you have yourselves a pretty cool broom. Now we're also going to try, we could not try brooms without going for a kamikaze broom. Let's try out this kamikaze beast. Okay, there we go. We've got two brooms. Now we're going to need to fill these brooms up. So we're going to need to put the broom inside the blood infuser. This will slowly tick up the broom to give it all the blood it needs. Okay, my dudes, it's time to take off. Oh man, this is a real Harry Potter moment. So to use the broom, you put it in your hot bar, then you right click and you sit on the broom. Here's a third person look at what this looks like. Oh yeah, sitting on the broom. Doesn't look very comfortable, but it's it's pretty cool. So let's see what this does speed-wise. Okay, well it's not exactly blazing speed, but it's pretty chill. It's a pretty chill time. Oh yeah, flying my broom around the compound. This is great. This is so cool. I love this. This is riding in style. It's not exactly the quickest way to zip around, especially now we have Mage Leap, which is insane. But riding this broom around is pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Amazing stuff. Let's fly up to that mountain and do a lap. We're going to do a loop around the mountain and come back. Because I do like this mountain. I like building in the shadow of this. I think it's really cool when you set up your base around something really tall that you can see in the distance. Gives you perspective. Here we go up in the clouds. Whoosh, up here with the eagles. And loop back down to the compound. Yeah, through those clouds. Oh, this is this is really cool. Brooms are just a really nice, fun, chill way of getting around. So we'll come down here to land. Whoosh. Shift to get off of it. Here we go. Kamikaze time. So this is a quicker broom. As you can see, yeah, the speed already is much better because of that blaze rod. But when we smash into something, well, we're going to see an explosion. Who are we going to smash into, my friends? Who's lying around? Oh. Careful, this is like riding with nitroglycerin on the front of your broom. You don't want to run into the wrong thing. Oh, who's this? It's McChinger the Baron. Well, we're about to kamikaze into you. Oh, no! Oh, McChinger. Luckily, we're both pretty sturdy dudes. McChinger survived. I survived. Yeah, I didn't, didn't, didn't lose all of my health. Pretty cool. And the broom didn't explode either. Okay, that's good to know. Now, is this going to explode if I just ram into, like, the ground? No! Okay, so we're in luck. This only explodes if we ram into, like, a creature, but it does dismount us, so it's not the quickest and easiest of ways to deal with a dude. Now, can we cast spells from the back of the broom? That is a big question. So into my backpack, and let's get out the Apocalypse Wand. Now, this broom will run out of blood pretty quickly. You can see down there on the bottom right, you get like a bit of a square that shows you how much blood is left. So with the Apocalypse Wand, let's wipe out this poor guy's little house. Yeah, now this is perhaps the most cool, important thing of... Wait, oh yeah, there we go, I can see stuff being deleted. Yeah, explode... Oh, careful, this might actually blow up the broom. So that's one of the big things about this broom, is that you can kind of ride around sowing chaos and destruction from the skies. Yeah! Castable spells while you're flying around. And that's what makes the broom really cool. It's very versatile. You can dig, you can chop, you can do all kinds of things. Using Mage Leap is cool and stuff. But we can't shift away from our spell book or we'll fall from the sky. But with a broom, we can just ride, chill, shoot some apocalypse, explode the world as we're flying through it. Forget enchant the world, we're going to explode this mother trucker. So 
So as always, a massive thank you for watching this episode of Enchant the World. This episode we looked into evil craft and explored how to create a broom. They're versatile, useful, and while they're not as good as other transport methods, in the end game, they're pretty versatile, pretty fun. They definitely get style points because it looks pretty cool riding around on a broom, especially if you can put like a player's head of one of your enemies on the front of it. As always, a massive thank you to you guys that are subscribed on Patreon and on YouTube. Hop on over to the Discord because pretty soon we're going to be launching our new modded Minecraft server for YouTube and Patreon members. But until then, don't forget to hit like and subscribe, drop a comment for where you want to see me go next because I do need to get down occultism, but checking out other magical evil mods has been pretty fun. So let me know what you want to see. But until next time, my dudes, thank you for watching and take care.